Today, a simple video about upgrading from ESXi 6.5 to 6.7. Now, on the right, I've got some recent articles like Supermicro ZND, the system I happen to be using for this video, and it has version of BIOS 2.0 showing right there. And I'm ready to roll with moving from this GA build, the generally available build, to 6.5. Let me show you. This article has a list. And if we look, we'll see 6.5 when it came out was called build 45, 45.64.106 right there, GA build. So yeah, this was just installed all of uh, a couple hours ago and I got the 60 day you know trial going here. Now that is the target for this video. People that are using the free hypervisor, maybe in a test lab, just want to test uh, say mitigation for this L1 terminal fault migration um, technique. If you want to rehearse that in a home lab, cool. This article gives you a way to do that very easily. Also, sysadmins that don't have VMware Update Manager, which is really the preferred way to upgrade, which is a, a, takes a little longer. It's a, a GUI walkthrough here. Um, if you're in production, that's what you should be using. Okay, Or... People have e VMUG Advantage eval experience and their code is a little older. Maybe it was two, three months old. They revisit that several times a year, but still it might not have the latest patches like for that vulnerability I mentioned earlier that just came out, uh, got published two days ago. Okay, so that's the users. Now let's get into the warnings. Read the entire article below. There's all kinds of stuff about the backstory, uh, the readmes, doing your homework, all of that. Please, not kidding. Read it. Next, updating your VCSA. Mm-hmm. I talk about that below. How about I just show you? Here's my VCSA. I already updated it. So I'm running VCSA, and it's obviously working. I'll also show you it's 6.7 here. If we look here, we can see it's 6.7. It's got the new interface. You look at the summary screen, and it says 6.7. It actually has the latest build number. And it's got a very easy... Uh, update function. No updates found at the moment. So yeah, check, check, items one and two done. Back up your hypervisor, please. I even have a video how to do it. This article is very detailed, talks about the software I use, which is free, and it's rather straightforward to back up SD or USB and label your media. So you're, the idea is you're booting off of a identical bit-for-bit -bit clone of your hypervisor. So the risk is gone. So if you have a problem, you can just roll back. You can put the old USB drive in that was working fine before you tried upgrading to 6.7. If, you if you're in these categories here, you might not have any support. So eval experience users don't have any official VMware support. Free hypervisor, they don't have any support. So again, be careful and back up first. One, two, and three are knocked off. Now we get to the permalink section. So if you're sharing with someone like say social media, Right click here, copy link address. It'll bring them right to the command we want. Now, if I triple click, it puts the whole line in the clipboard. But if I swipe the mouse across it, it puts just the whole line without that trailing carriage return at the end you might have seen. So now when I hit control C or right click copy, when I paste it into a putty session, it's not actually gonna execute the command. It's just gonna sit there waiting for me to do stuff. All right, so that's ready. And now we get to the actual directions. We've read the release notes. We follow the prerequisites. Make sure your server is on the 6.7 compatibility list. So you'll end up in a situation where we've upgraded something that's completely unsupported. Maybe it won't even work. Ah, here we go. Step one, open an SSH session. How do you do that? Well, let me remind you. Under manage, you're probably gonna see this tab by default, but if you click on over to services, you've got SSH. And my article mentions how to do that. There's a link on reminding you if you forgot about that. Cool. How about maintenance mode? Well, my particular host has no virtual machines running. It has only one in inventory. But fine, let's follow along and right click. Enter maintenance mode. Cool. It gives me no complaints because there's no workload running in there. Awesome. Technically, that's optional because if you have no VMs running, there's no impact in not doing that. Reboot before, if this thing's been running for weeks or, sorry, months or years, there could be some issues, and this gets into why. Item four, list all the profiles in the server. 
completely optional. Not really going to bother with that one. Gives you a whole list of all the SXI uh, versions that are available to pull down over the internet straight to your ESXi host. So I'm jumping right ahead to the next step, and that is logging in to that PuTTY session. Excellent. What's next? I'm going to make this nice and wide, because what I'm pasting in is I want it to not wrap. OK, dry run. So whoops, never mind. Firewall rule first, then dry run. So this time I triple clicked and hit Control C, right click, carriage returns included, firewall all done. That was easy. So step five is done. Now to get ready for step six again, I need to get this in my clipboard. Right click, copy, right click, paste, and now it's waiting for me to type that dry run command. So now we're on step six, dash dash dry run. Space, dash, dash, dry, dash, run, enter. Okay, so it's hitting the internet. Your ESXi host does need to have internet access. I covered that in my prerequisites that I mentioned. And if there's any vibs that need to be removed, take note of that. Uh, you may have a custom ISO that you install the ESXi with. So you gotta be a little careful here. You could end up in a situation where this is gonna replace some vibs that you need for functionality, like your service console. Now for me, it's a fresh build of ESXi GA version with no third-party VIBs, so there's no warnings. So for me, it was pretty simple. All right, this, this is it, the actual run. So I'm not gonna type dry run this time, I'm just gonna let it rip. Okay, so now, right here, we're getting the very latest version here of ESXi that incorporates fixes released just two days ago. So this puts me at the bleeding edge, right? Just pointing that out. And uh, I'll also point out if you're on 6.5 update 2, any of these update 2s, you can't do a direct upgrade to 6.7 at this point in time. So there'll be a patch at some point to 6.5 update 2, I don't know, C or whatever they call it. And at that point, you'll have an upgrade path to 6.7. But at the moment, if you jumped ahead and didn't read the release notes carefully and jumped from U1 to U2 with 6.5, it kept you from being able to upgrade to 6.7 in the near future. Just pointing that out, that's all the more reason to read release notes and do your homework before you jump in and do stuff like this. There's more to consider too, like do your backup products actually work? And I have an article on my site about that. Um, but yes, the answer some of the big companies at this point we're well past 90 days since the April release of 6.7. And yes, they do support 6.7. Very important. If you're doing VM backups on a daily basis, you wouldn't want to upgrade to 6.7 without thinking about that, right? Okay. So we're in the middle of the actual run. When it's done, I'm probably just going to um, do this command. So triple click, control C. So now the firewall rule, I'm putting it back where it came from. And it looks like it finished. If we scroll back a little. Vibs removed, a whole list of them. Vibs added, a whole list of them. Reboot true, and it was successful. So this went very well. And for some reason, uh, clipboard didn't work out. I don't know what happened there. So let's try that again. Triple click, control C, right click, Firewall fixed. Okay, we have an extra carriage return there. It's a little weird. And then finally, reboot. Before hitting enter, I'm going to take a moment to get all this in my clipboard. And I might actually want to contain this in the blog post. It's a nice uh, library here showing you all the vibs that are in the package. And now when I go to Notepad and paste, there we go. I got the whole thing. Everything that just happened. If there's any question about what VIBs you have, you don't even need the commands. You can see what was installed. Okay, cool. Now, reboot. Okay, now, when you reboot, normally you can't really see what's going on, but I happen to have I, IPMI going here. I have an out-of-band way for you to see the host reboot. Notice if I hit spacebar, it turns yellow, right? 
So this is the host, and it's about to show reboot, and there it goes. So my server's now rebooting, and after it's done rebooting, we'll see that ESXi 6.7 is coming up. So that's the procedure. Now, after this reboot, it's gonna be in maintenance mode. So that's gonna be step 11, take it out of maintenance mode. And then I say, hey, go ahead and check if everything's working correctly. So in my case, in this particular server, uh, yeah, I've done this before. Um, a new install of 6.7 works great. So does an upgrade. I haven't done as many upgrades, honestly, in a home lab. Um, frankly, when you're messing around, it's actually quite easy to just reinstall your hypervisor. It doesn't delete anything on your file system, your VMS file system. And you just right click your VMX files your, that signify your VMs, bring them back in the inventory and run them. So you yeah, in a small home lab with a handful of VMs. The importance of a fresh install is pretty, uh, or versus an upgrade install, it doesn't matter so much. Upgrade install can be a little more complicated. You kind of got to figure out what drivers you ended up with if you had third party ones. It should generally leave them alone. But again, that's that dry run point. It might not. It might say, hey, I'm about to uh, um, do this to this driver. Or let's forget third party for a minute. What about the native drivers? What if a newer one's not supported? So yeah, those are all things to think about. The things that really matter be like uh, networking and storage, but networking, you could lose the access to the service console, right? That'd be kind of bad. Okay, so this server clearly says 6.7 and the build clearly ends in uh, 9484548. So let's check the article. And I'm gonna hit control home, go right to the top. Scroll down a little bit. Looks good to me. 948548. So the build is correct. So as I wrap up this video, I'm basically going to just be logging into the host console again. And uh, host client, I should say. So vSphere host client, it's when you point your browser straight to the server. There's no VCSA in this video notice. So I was trying to make this video applicable to anybody. Um, again, I would strongly recommend uh, you go with eval experience. It's well worth 365 days and you can just re-up it and never have to reinstall everything from scratch again and worry about time bombs. Okay, so we're back. I should be able to get in the server now. So if I hit refresh here, it's gonna wig out on me. It's an old session from before the upgrade. So I may end up having to kind of close that window and start it again. I'm back. So I'm logging in and everything looks good. Customer experience program, a one time question. Highly recommend you do that. To trust VMware, you can read all about what's actually sent to VMware. It's not data or anything sensitive. Okay, BIOS version two, yep. What I really wanna look at is here. Six, seven, success. We already knew that from the boot screen and isn't this nice? Kind of a ticker tape saying, hey, you may be vulnerable to this. Go ahead and read this article. Not sure why that's not hyperlinked, but hey, um, I'm pretty pleased with that. And that actually goes to my thing I was talking about, 55636, right? Go up here. 55636. Something I tweeted about and talked about yesterday. Uh, okay this vulnerability announcement, L1 terminal fault mitigation. So isn't it nice that it's actually warning you right on this main screen and evaluation mode. So that's it, uh, this was successful. Probably a little more compelling if I actually um, power on a VM. But it's not gonna happen until you take it out of maintenance mode, just like it said. So picking up where we left off, step 11, turn off maintenance mode, right click, exit maintenance mode. Power out of VM, why not? 
Okay. Now, on the host. Oh, yeah, not on the host. How about on monitor hardware? Let's check that out. Nice. Temperatures look normal. And fan speed, no, correct RPMs. So this is working great. Remember I said that earlier that uh, you don't have to do any tweaks to get hardware monitoring working with 6.7 on the Xeon D uh, in particular. That's where SSH is. How about networking? There it is. We have 10 gig interfaces now that we can use. So that's it. This upgrade was a success. Hopefully you found this walkthrough video of the process of moving from 6.5 to 6.7 helpful. This is just one way to do it. And thank you for watching. And thanks for visiting Tinkertry. IT at home.